it feels somewhat surreal. I'm kind of um, in this bubble where I'm just going from place to place to place and doing stuff. Sometimes I get a pause, a little break in work, and then it's just like, wow. That's what it's like. It's really hard to put it into words. It's almost like it's surreal what's happening to me or what has been happening to me. Never, growing up in a council estate, did I ever anticipate I would be on TV um, mm -hmm. and not in the way that I am on TV. When you think of yourself as a little boy mm. um, living with dyslexia, yeah. although, of course, at the time, yeah. you weren't to know that's what it was. No, no, I wasn't. Um, I think when I grew up in the 70s and the 80s in the educational system, it was more a case of um, you're dumb, so you get put in the kind of dumb classes, is yeah. what they used to say. So in my secondary school, I remember they used to have it as tiered, so you would have the P's, that were perfect, and then you had the M's, which was the medium learners, and then you had the L's, which was the learners, or sometimes people call them the losers, yeah. um, and that's where I was. And there was a number of us that was in that particular class or that group that were dyslexic, but we were not... It wasn't discovered, especially with me. I discovered it when I was about 31, if I remember rightly. Um, wow. So I left school, secondary school, with... I think I had no qualifications. I remember going back to school and there's all these like lists and charts of like everybody's name and you look for it, you see the grades that you've got. Um, and my one was just you, 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 all the way along. And I remember a teacher passing and I said, what, is, what does you mean, what is that? And they just said, oh, you're unqualified, you're unclassified, like we couldn't mark you. So you have no marks whatsoever, no grades. Um, yeah. So you're... You're called a loser, yeah. unqualified, yeah. unclassified. Yeah. And then at 31, yeah. somebody says to you, this is not you, this is your brain. Yeah. This is dyslexia. Yes. This is something else. Yeah. What was, what was that like? It was a really nice feeling, being able to put a kind of um, label or a kind of a, a statement I can make to people because at the end of the day before I was tested it was always I would avoid reading it was like I didn't really want to do it and then what they did to me um, they actually tested me and realized that I had the reading ability of an 11 year old and you did this amazing BBC documentary yes. about dyslexia mm. and the discovery of it and also the sort of the continual learning of it, because, of course, that's what's happening yeah. now. We've, we're just going to run a, a little clip to okay, show cool. that learning. OK, OK, you can do this. Come on, Jay. What I feel like doing there is just throwing this on the floor and just saying it's to it all because I can't get something as simple as that. I've got the mouse one. <laughs> yeah. What's it like watching that and that, seeing that frustration? I, I, I still have that kind of frustration. I'm still learning. I'm still learning how to read. Um, well, I'm learning how to read better. I can read, but I can't read fluently. And learning phonics is what I was trying to learn there. Um, it's probably one of the hardest things in the world. Like, I know the alphabet, I know the alphabet song, but phonics... It's another thing altogether. It's it? completely different, yeah. Yeah. Take me back to, to seven years ago, because I yes. guess that was when you were perhaps at your most vulnerable. I was in a place where I kind of knew I couldn't see tomorrow. And when you wake up in the morning and you can't see yourself existing in tomorrow, the only thing to do is just end it all. So seven years ago, um, I was driving up a motorway and trying to crash into a bridge is basically what I was trying to do. But I didn't know my naivety that every bridge up the motorway is covered by a barrier. So I'm driving along and it's just like, okay, the next one. Oh, there's a barrier there. Okay, the next one, carried on and carried on. And then the car started flashing, the, like the petrol light. So I just pulled in to a service station, put some petrol in, and then drove over to a retail park. And I remember sitting there, I think I sat in the car for about a week just like people were just going past all the time and just doing what they're doing. I don't even remember going to the toilet. It was just a void. It was almost as if um, I was there. I knew I was physically there, but I wasn't mentally there. How then did you move from that place? Um, a friend of mine um, who I had some dealings with in Wolverhampton, um, my ex-wife have called him and said the police have found him. 
Um, he's in Wolverhampton. So he came to see me. And I don't know what he said. He must have said something to me that I remember sitting in his car and I just broke down crying. I mean, proper crying. Snot, tears, the whole shabam. Um, and it was the first time that I remember looking at him in kind of like embarrassment. It was all my, I can, I can even remember the, the pose I had. It was like that and kind of looking that he's going to say something, he's going to take the mickey or whatever. And then he just turned around and said to me, I think I've got a job for you. And I'm looking at him like, hold on, did he say what I think he said? And I said, sorry, and I'm crying still, like sobbing. And he's like, yeah, I think I've got a job for you. We need to take you to the office um, and let's get you working. And I was like, but don't you see all of this, what's going on here? Um, and then, um, yeah, he just took me to the office and I haven't washed for a week. I smell my body odor and he's introducing me to all these people and I felt really exposed. It was like I walked into the place naked because I didn't want to meet these people in the, in the state that I was yeah. in. Um, he had a few meetings, I sat in the office and then he took me to his place and then uh, kind of like the rest is history to a certain extent because after that, showing my vulnerability, everything just started slotting into place. It's the weirdest thing, very, very weird. So when I, I can still see seven years ago and then to see where I am now, talking to you, doing whatever I'm doing, it's like, are you for real? Is this really your life now? Just because I showed my vulnerability. Well, thank you for sharing your experiences with us today. Are we done? We're done. Oh, There's come so much on. more to talk about, isn't <laughs> yeah, there? there is. All right. <laughs> that was quick. All right. <laughs> it's been so good to talk to you. Likewise. Today, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.